as a result of what Travis shared with us. We are going to discuss today the ways in which short sellers are concealing fraudulent shares, the enormous amount of loans that they are taking out, and the reasons why this is detrimental to them. A step-by-step -step breakdown of these sophisticated systems is what we need to do. A large extent, over-the-counter market makers are employing equity swaps in order to circumvent the possibility of failing to fulfill their FTD buying commitments. The reason that real shares cannot be distributed is due to the fact that the majority of them are being rehypothecated by brokers and the majority of them are being lent out repeatedly in order to create the illusion of liquidity without actually delivering the shares. The majority of the trading in AMC and GME is controlled by market makers such as Citadel and Virtue, as seen by FINRA data. This pattern helps us understand why some companies, such as AMC, can experience significant price declines despite only a tiny amount of trading activity. It is quite probable that they rely on equity swaps. If these were not utilitized, the open interest on options would reach levels that are not within the realm of sustainability. In order to have a complete understanding of this, it is necessary to be aware of how Citadel's internalization of AMC trades effectively prevents true buy volume from having an effect on the lit market. Similarly, Virtue's operations indicate a sophisticated method of concealing trades within derivatives. Crystal Ball asserts that these techniques are not merely deliberate. Rather, they are maneuvers that have been premeditated with the purpose of concealing the truth underlying trading volumes. At Citadel Securities, it is true that the company maintains its books and records in countries such as Canada. In the Hong Kong, because they are located overseas, China and the United Kingdom are able to circumvent laws in the United States. A significant portion of the activity is not recorded in accordance with American law, which has significant implications. The short interest data that we see today for stocks, such as AMC and GM, may only reveals the bare minimum. This is because of the opaque nature of offshore and synthetic trading. The reason for this is that numbers that are self-reported or published from offshore areas sometimes omit essential information. There is a deliberate effort to conceal the actual magnitude of short interest by using underreporting. Although there is a high short interest rate that is reported, it is abundantly evident that the actual figures are significantly greater. It has been reported that Virtue Financial, a significant player in this web, possesses around $6.3 billion worth of securities that have been sold but have not yet been purchased. These stocks are essentially short holdings. According to the data that was leaked from the API in 2021, Virtue was selling fraudulent shares that accounted for 80% of the total float for equities, such as AMC and GME. To provide you with an idea of the magnitude of this amount, the typical float rate for this kind of activity is anywhere between 1% and 3%. This discovery demonstrated that bona fide market violated a great deal of the rules. We made numerous attempts to obtain formal confirmation from broking firms such as Fidelity, Vanguard, and Schwab regarding practices that were comparable, but we did not receive any reply. Despite the fact that the regulatory officials have been provided with abundant evidence of this misconduct on multiple occasions, the systemic problem continues to exist. Considering that the float of synthetic shares is likely to be far bigger now than it was in 2021, it may be concluded that this manipulation has most likely just become more severe. On top of that, Citadel's approach of retaining offshore books is comparable to its synthetic share manipulation in the sense that these firms conceal their genuine positions by trading outside of the jurisdiction of the United States. The actual number of shares that were sold short is far more than what is stated as a consequence of this. Another major player, Apex, has also violated the regulations for disclosing short interest by incorrectly reporting and even deleting large options trades. This is how they have broken the rules. The extensive nature of this manipulation is demonstrated by the failure to close FTDs or adhere to threshold lists in order to conceal the billions or perhaps trillions of dollars that would be required to come to an agreement over these viewpoints, the numbers that are presented are always skewed down. The large financial institutions that have been implicated in this disaster are also receiving some attention here and there. Many shares are lent out by financial institutions such as Citi and Bank of America to individuals who engage in illicit short selling. Not only that, but these financial institutions also hold derivative positions worth trillions of dollars, which renders them equally over-leveraged. For instance, Citi was discovered to have shorted AMC utilizing Brazilian 8RS, which is a technology that is frequently utilized in the process of creating phony stocks. The same as before, there is a greater part played by Bank of America. 
Because it is a primary lender to Citadel, AMC also has short positions. This means that it has a significant amount of exposure to Citadel's positions in the event that Citadel experiences financial difficulties. As a consequence of this, Bank of America would be required to call back payments, which could result in the failure of other financial institutions as well. One more significant aspect to consider is that hedge funds such as AMC and GME frequently engage in shorting each other. In other words, every change in the price of one stock has an immediate impact on the price of the other stock simultaneously. An illustration of this would be the fact that if AMC initiated a short squeeze, it would most likely result in the liquidation of GME positions, and vice versa. The extent to which these equities trading activities are intertwined is demonstrated by the fact that they adhere to the same algorithms. In addition, recent news reports demonstrate that the manipulation is still taking place, yet there are certain publications that highlight the positive aspects, such as the possibility that AMC will benefit from a box-off comeback. In most cases, people have a negative attitude towards debt. In recent articles, for instance, it has been stated that AMC is on the verge of a death cross in terms of technical analysis due to the large levels of debt that it has. These reports, on the other hand, conveniently disregard the actions that AMC has done to cope with its debt, such as restructuring and taking advantage of lower borrowing rates. Rather than that, the emphasis is maintained on bearish indications, which are bolstered by algorithmic trading and the pressure exerted by short sellers. In the end, all of this results in a system that is designed to be detrimental to market makers and smaller participants. It appears that financial institutions and even the media are complicit in the perpetuation of fraud through the use of phony shares. There are equity swaps and imprecise reporting, but as the financial situation of these companies continues to deteriorate, there is a greater possibility that they may be required to pay. There will be a significant impact on the global financial markets as a result of the liquidations that will take place in the event that the shorts lose control of AMC or GM. It is impossible for this complex web of overleveraged positions, derivatives, and bogus shares to endure over the course of time. It would be a good sign for small investors who have been battling against these tactics for a long time if significant players went bankrupt, since it would demonstrate how widespread this systemic fraud actually is. To summarize, it is essential to have an understanding of the degree to which AMC and GME are manipulated in order to survive in this volatile market. The status quo is something that small investors are nevertheless determined to question, despite the fact that the future isn't quite certain. Guys, now we are getting closer to discovering the truth. We have nothing else to offer you at this time. So, what are your thoughts on the stock of AMC? Join the discussion and share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. We appreciate you watching.